Hey everybody, um, today I'm reading a section from Western Marxism and the Soviet Union by Marcel van der Linden. The piece that I'm going to read is about uh, Stojanovich. should be very short. This is from chapter um, 6, from the repression of the Prague Spring to Perestroika, 1968-85. The the section that Stojanovich is under is Theories of Bureaucratic Collectivism. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but, you know, it could be Stoyanovich, um, but I'm not sure. After the mo- demise of Zhilas, a second theoretician of the new class society emerged in Yugoslavia during the second half of the 1960s, Fetisar Stoyanovich, born 1931. A philosopher became internationally known as one of the moving spirits behind the critical journal Praxis. Footnote. About Stojanovic, see the quote translator's introduction, end quote, in Stojanovic 1973. About the Praxis group, see Markovich 1975 and Markovich and Cohen 1975. End footnote. After. after writing some initial articles about the topic. Stojanovich published his book Between Ideals and Reality in 1969, first published in Belgrade in 1969, which was to a large extent devoted to ethical questions of socialism, but also contained several chapters about East European society. Contrary to those who, like Kuran and Modzelewski, believed that the establishment of bureaucratic rule was inevitable, Stojanovic insisted on the existence of historical possibilities of choice. In Stojanovic's view, there was no, quote, iron law, end quote, such that revolutions inevitably degenerated. The establishment of a new ruling class could be prevented by the stubborn struggle of consistently revolutionary forces. Thus, in principle, quote, two possibilities are being laid bare as a consequence of the crisis of capitalism, statism and socialism, end quote, Stojanovich. In the case of statism, a category which Stojanovich applied to the Soviet Union but not to Yugoslavia, the state apparatus is the collective owner of the means of production which exploits the workers. In contrast to Zhilas, Stojanovich does not delineate differentiations within the bureaucracy. This could not could hardly be considered an original thesis anymore, but the novelty of Stojanovich's theory inherited in a number of considerations, excuse me, inherited in a number of considerations which Stojanovich presented with regard to the quote status class end quote. In the first place, Stojanovich pointed out that the quote status class end quote deviated in an essential respect from traditional ruling classes because its economic power grew out of political power, while the reverse applied to the bourgeoisie. This observation took Gilas's conclusion that the new ruling, quote, class, end quote, historically originated as a political class one step further. Secondly, Stoyanovich tried much more clearly than previous supporters of the theory of, quote, bureaucratic collectivism, end quote, to justify the application of the concept of, quote, class to the political elite. The term, quote, ruling caste, end quote, which Trotsky had used occasionally seemed incorrect to Stojanovich, or Stojanovich, because a, quote, caste, end quote, is an exclusive social group reproducing itself on the basis of inherited characteristics, and that did not apply to the Soviet bureaucracy. Likewise, he deemed the term, quote, social stratum, end quote, inappropriate, because it signified an ideological mystification. The only term suitable to describe their relations realistically was the concept of a class, because that concept was based on a categorical symmetry, defined as follows, quote, status class, 
working class, end quote. Stojanovich's assumption, it seems, was that an oppressed class could be oppressed only by a ruling class. Consistent with this assumption, he was even prepared to define a group as a class which, by his own testimony, was determined politically and not economically. The end.